Could the popular health trend of intermittent fasting be putting your heart at risk? Today, we delve into recent research that suggests some troubling implications. Intermittent fasting. You've likely heard the term, perhaps even tried it yourself. It's a dietary practice that's taken the health and fitness world by storm. The idea is simple. Cycle between periods of eating and fasting. This could mean skipping breakfast, eating only within a certain window of time each day, or even going a full day without food every now and then. The benefits touted are many. Weight loss, improved mental clarity, increased longevity, even the promise of warding off diseases. It's no wonder then that this method has been embraced by health enthusiasts, celebrities, and everyday people alike. But could there be a hidden danger lurking beneath the surface of this seemingly beneficial health trend? Enter a recent study conducted by Wenza Zhong and colleagues. This research, presented at the American Heart Association Conference, has thrown a proverbial spanner in the works. It suggests that intermittent fasting, specifically eating within an eight-hour window, might be linked to a significantly higher risk of heart disease-related death compared to eating over a 12 to 16-hour window. Now, it's crucial to note that this study does not establish a direct cause and effect relationship between time-restricted eating and heart disease deaths. There are many factors at play, and the researchers themselves have emphasized the need for more in-depth studies to fully understand the implications of their findings. But it does raise questions. Questions that challenge the prevailing notions about intermittent fasting and its impact on our health. It's a reminder that in the pursuit of wellness, it's vital to consider all aspects, not just the ones that fit neatly into our preconceived notions or desires. So, what exactly did this study reveal about the link between intermittent fasting and heart disease? Let's explore. At the heart of this research lies a shocking discovery. A significant increase in heart disease-related deaths among those practicing intermittent fasting. Now, let's delve into the details of this study. The research was conducted by Wenzhe Zhong and his team, who meticulously gathered and analyzed data from around 20,000 adults, spanning over an eight-year period. The focus of their study was on eating patterns, specifically honing in on the popular trend of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, for those who may not know, is a method of dieting that involves cycling between periods of eating and fasting. One of the more popular forms of this diet involves restricting your daily eating period to just eight hours, say from noon to eight in the evening, and then fasting for the remaining 16 hours of the day. Now here's where things take a turn. Zhang and his team found that participants who followed this eight-hour eating schedule had a startling 91% higher risk of dying from heart disease. Yes, you heard it right, a 91% increase. It's a figure that's hard to ignore and certainly raises questions about the safety of this trend. But there's a catch. While this increase is significant, it's crucial to understand that this study does not establish a direct cause and effect relationship. In other words, the researchers are not saying that intermittent fasting directly leads to heart disease. There could be other factors at play here, like the overall quality of the diet or existing health conditions. So, while the findings of this study are indeed alarming, they don't conclusively prove that intermittent fasting is a one-way ticket to heart disease. It's not a red light, but more of a caution sign, reminding us to consider all aspects of our health and not just jump on the latest trend without understanding the potential implications. But before we start panicking, it's important to recognize that this study does not establish a direct cause and effect relationship. While the study's findings are alarming, they don't definitively prove that intermittent fasting causes heart disease. There are other factors at play. What might these factors be? Well, for one, the study mentioned doesn't establish a causal relationship between time-restricted eating and heart disease-related deaths. That means, in plain English, that while the two may appear related, one doesn't necessarily cause the other. There could be other factors influencing these results. For instance, consider the participants' overall dietary quality. We all know that what we eat plays a crucial role in our health. A diet filled with processed foods and unhealthy fats is likely to have more detrimental effects on our heart health than the timing of our meals. 
So perhaps the individuals in the study who followed an eight-hour eating schedule were also consuming a less nutritious diet. And what about the individuals themselves? Were they all perfectly healthy to begin with? Or did some have pre-existing health conditions that may have influenced the results? The study suggests that individuals with health conditions may unintentionally adopt intermittent fasting due to treatment effects. Could it be that these individuals were more likely to die from heart disease not because of their eating schedule, but because of their underlying health conditions? It's a possibility that can't be ignored. Additionally, the study doesn't explore the impact of fasting on various ethnic groups and health outcomes. We know that diet and health can be influenced by a multitude of factors, including genetics and lifestyle. So, the effects of intermittent fasting could potentially vary between different populations. It's also worth noting that the study analyzed data from around 20,000 adults over an eight-year period. While this is a substantial sample size, it's still a fraction of the global population. So, should we throw the baby out with the bathwater and abandon intermittent fasting? Not necessarily. Despite the potential risks, it's important to remember that intermittent fasting isn't inherently bad. It's all about balance and individual health. When implemented correctly and responsibly, this eating strategy can indeed offer a host of potential benefits. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution, but it can be a valuable tool for those seeking to improve their health, provided they approach it with the right mindset and precautions. Intermittent fasting can potentially help regulate blood sugar levels, improve mental clarity, aid in weight loss, and even contribute to longevity. It's a practice that has been around for centuries, used by our ancestors during times of scarcity and incorporated into religious practices. It's not just about when you eat, but also about what you eat during your eating window. Research has shown that combining intermittent fasting with a balanced, nutrient-dense diet can yield positive results. Eating a variety of whole foods, lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, and healthy fats during your eating window can help maintain energy levels and ensure you're getting the nutrients your body needs to function optimally. Now let's talk about the individuals with health conditions who may unintentionally adopt intermittent fasting due to treatment effects it's crucial for these individuals to consult with healthcare professionals before starting a fasting regimen. Intermittent fasting isn't for everyone. Some people, particularly those with certain medical conditions, may not respond well to this eating pattern. It's also important to listen to your body and adjust your eating patterns if you're feeling unwell. Remember, balance is key. It's about finding a sustainable eating pattern that works for your lifestyle and health needs. A balanced approach to intermittent fasting involves understanding the potential risks, recognizing the benefits, and tailoring the practice to suit your individual needs and circumstances. In light of these findings, what's the best course of action? Let's discuss. In the face of this new research, it's clear that further investigation is needed to truly understand the impacts of intermittent fasting. What we know so far is just the tip of the iceberg. The study by Wen Zhong and colleagues has opened a Pandora's box of questions that need answering. The relationship between time-restricted eating and heart disease-related deaths is still murky, and the study doesn't establish a causal link. The need of the hour is more comprehensive research. We need studies that take into account the diversity of our global population with a focus on various ethnic groups and health outcomes. Does intermittent fasting affect everyone the same way? Or are certain groups more susceptible to its risks? These are questions that future research must strive to answer. In addition, we need to explore the role of overall dietary quality in relation to intermittent fasting. It's not just about when you eat, but what you eat as well. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins will always triumph over a poorly balanced diet, no matter the eating schedule. Furthermore, we must emphasize the importance of individualized diet plans. Each body is unique, and what works for one person may not work for another. It's essential to consult with health professionals before making any drastic dietary changes. They can provide guidance based on your personal health history and current condition helping you make informed decisions about your diet. In conclusion, 
The future of fasting is a complex landscape that needs to be navigated with care. As we uncover more about the potential benefits and pitfalls of intermittent fasting, our understanding will evolve, and so will our dietary recommendations. For now, the message is clear. Approach intermittent fasting with caution and always prioritize a balanced, nutritious diet over trendy health fads.